Hey everybody, so what I want to do here today is go over probably one of the most important basic uh, things that we are going to learn in, in class this year, and that is how to design controlled experiments. This is one of the things that we will be doing a lot. So I want to just go over how to set this up so that we're doing it the right way. The, the big idea, once again, is that we're learning how to design a step-by-step -step controlled experiment to show how changing one variable affects, affects another. Um, and we've talked about this idea of the, the definition that we're using in science, um, of science as a lens that's used to explain our current understanding of how the world works using predictive falsifiable evidence. And the part that we're going to be focusing on here today is, is gathering this predictive falsifiable evidence and how to do this in a way that will... Um, that will be uh, repeatable so that others can follow it, but also in a structured way so that you know that one or changing one variable uh, affects the other. So here's, here's the big idea that we, we talked about the last few days. This idea of, of cause and effect. In science, we are trying to understand how the world works through experimentation. And what we do is we, we kind of compare two things and we say okay when I design an experiment I want to see if I change this thing this is what happens to this other thing alright so once again we're trying to see how changing one variable affects the other or cause and effect all right. so let's use this example of a, of a pendulum let's say we have the question how does changing the mass of a pendulum affect the time that it takes to swing back and forth now the the name for the time that it takes to swing back and forth is called the period so so based on this question what are the two variables that we're uh, that, that we're measuring remember we're talking about how does changing the mass of a pendulum affect the time that it takes to swing back and forth or, or that that period well I'm gonna think about the or the, the two things that we're measuring are the mass of the pendulum and the time it takes to swing back and forth right? but also based on this question which one's the independent variable which one's the dependent variable remember the independent variable is the one that we are actively changing or I'm in charge of the independent variable all right the dependent variable is something that also changes possibly um, but it depends on the independent variable so if I look at this well I'm actively changing the mass of the pendulum alright so that's gonna be my independent variable now the time it takes to swing back and forth that that period of the pendulum that is going to be our dependent variable so also, I want you to think about, based on this question, based on this idea of we're comparing the mass of the pendulum and how that affects the, the time it takes to swing back and forth, we want to make sure that we know that, that it's only a change in this affects a change in this. We don't want other things clouding that. So what are some of the things that would need to stay constant? Well, if I'm looking at this, some, some possible constants might be the length of the string. I want to make sure that the, the length of the string stays the same the whole time. That release angle, I want to make sure that when I release it, okay, that it's going to be the, the same angle each time. Type of string, the way we time, lots of different things. We want to make sure that the only thing we are actively changing based on this question is the mass of the pendulum. All right. Now, what I want to do is start showing you how to set up this experiment. So once I have the question, once I've decided what the independent variable is, what the dependent variable is, then I want to start planning forward and trying to think of, okay, this is how I'm going to set this up. So the very first thing that I do is I want to divide up that independent variable, so in this case the mass of a pendulum, into evenly spaced samples and also the greater the sample size the better so I'm thinking okay in this case if I want to do a mass of a pendulum I could change that by using different amounts of washers let's say um, and it's gonna be a lot easier if if I let's say rather than just doing uh, one washer and a second washer I want to divide this up and maybe we're gonna do one, two, three, four, maybe even even five. All right, I want to spread that um, 
in, I, I want to spread out the measurements of those uh, independent variable samples out as, as much as possible so we can get a bigger idea of how the independent variable is affecting the dependent variable. And then the other part is I want to make sure that I repeat each one of those samples multiple times. All right? Usually the, the magic number, at least for us right here, is, is three times. Because we, what we want to do is we want to find the average. Not everything is going to be exactly the same each time. But we want to be able to average that out. So multiple, uh, multiple experience, multiple trials. So let's do uh, an example controlled experiment procedure together. All right, so let's say I'm, I'm trying to test that question uh, that we talked about earlier. So the first step is I'm just going to say how I'm going to set this up because I want somebody else to be able to look at this, look at these step-by-step -step procedures and be able to repeat it exactly the way I did it. All right, so in this, let's say we, um, we're going to set up our pendulum for step one and I want to tell them what I want to do. So I'm going to tie, so we're going to tie it right up here. It's going to be 15 centimeters long. We're going to tie it to a ring stand. And we're going to attach one half inch wa washer to the free end. All right. Then we're going to hold that pendulum for step two at a 20 degree angle. So this is going to be a 20 degree angle and then we're going to release. Step three, we're going to see how long it takes to swing back and forth five times. And then we're going to find the, the average time or the period time in seconds. So I'm going to take that total time, divide it by five to get the average swing back and forth time. Now, here's, here's what I, I want to do. Um, I, I don't want to write this out every single time. So I'm going to use this, uh, this idea of, of repeating in the steps. So for step four, perform steps one through three twice more to find the average period for a pendulum with one washer. So that's the, that, that's the whole process for going through one of these steps on our, our, ind our independent variable. Now, here's where I can save myself some time. Remember, I want to, to spread out the samples of that independent variable as much as possible. But I also want to describe how to do this so that others can follow this procedure. So what I'm going to do here in step five is I want to do the exact same things, but now I'm doing it with two washers instead of one. So rather than going through like the, the steps all over again, I'm just going to say repeat steps one through four with two washers. And for step six, repeat steps one through four with three washers. And then with, with four washers and five washers. So you see how that kind of uh, cuts down on how much writing we have to do, but it still shows exactly what you need to do. That's what we're looking for. So here's what I, I want you to do at, at this time. I want you to design a step-by-step -step controlled experiment where you can uh, investigate this question. How high does a ball bounce when dropped from different heights? So in order to do that, you're going to need to, to kind of follow those steps that we did in this, uh, in this video. If you have any questions, let me know.